If you want to see how the free market really works, this is the place to come. Hong Kong. Today, the per capita income in Hong Kong is higher than in Canada and Australia. Did they achieve this miracle here because of Obama-like government investment and job creation? No. This miracle hasn't been achieved by government action, by someone sitting in one of those tall buildings telling people what to do. It's been achieved by allowing the market to work. Hong Kong's colonial government mostly left people alone. The British rulers did enforce rule of law. They prevented people from robbing and killing each other. But then they basically sat around and drank tea. And free people, left alone, created prosperity. No government official is telling these people what to do. They're free to buy from whom they want, to sell to whom they want, to work for whom they want. Sometimes it looks like chaos, and so it is. But underneath, it's highly organized by the impersonal forces of a free marketplace. At the time, most other countries did not have that freedom to choose. India has tremendous economic and human potential. The human tragedy is that in India, that potential has been stifled by the straitjacket imposed by an all-wise and paternalistic government. Central planning in practice has condemned India's masses to poverty and misery. Joining us now is Johan Norberg, who's making new versions of Free to Choose, new documentaries about how free markets affect poor people. And he just returned from Hong Kong. What'd you learn? We've seen a free market revolution uh, these last 30 years, and it has had amazing results. More than 70,000 people have been lifted out of extreme poverty every day since Milton Friedman did this show. And because of Friedman's work? I think partly because of Friedman's work and uh, Friedman's ideas, because people work very hard everywhere around the world. They try to do the best for them and for their families, but only in some places they get the freedom and the incentives to really do that in, in good ways. And Friedman traveled around the world, he tried to explain these ideas, and it had a serious and important impact. And that was 30 years ago when he was traveling the world and talking about that. Here's another clip from Free to Choose. The free market enables people to go into any industry they want, to trade with whomever they want, to buy in the cheapest market around the world, to sell in the dearest market around the world. But most important of all, if they fail, they bear the cost. Why is failure important? Well, because it's a profit and a loss economy. We don't know what's going to work. We don't know what's going to be the best company that produces the most jobs. So we need those incentives. If you do very well, you make a profit. If you lose, you have to lose as well, because then others will imitate the best solutions, and, and that's what we're going to see more. But failure, people say, is cruel. It leads to people losing their job. We need to protect them. Of course. It's, it's bad. We don't want that to happen. But Pain is always bad, but if, if we don't have the nervous signal that tells us that when we have a hand on a hot plate, that's pain, well then we're going to have hands on hot plates in the future, and that's the same thing. If you subsidize, if you bail out bad business, we'll see more bad business in the future, and less job, less productivity, less wealth. Now you've been going to places not just Hong Kong, you went to, well, to where else? Vietnam, Kenya, what have you seen? Well, I see people striving everywhere. There's this temptation sometimes to explain problems in some places with culture, with religion, with laziness or something like that. But I don't think that's the case. People work incredibly hard. They all want what's best for them and for their families. But in most places, regulations, taxes, corruption means that they have to devote all that energy to really avoid the government, the regulations and the taxes. But whenever government opens up, we see amazing results. Something like 50% of all the wealth that has ever been created in the world has been created in these last 30 years since Friedman did this show. So much of this is counterintuitive. and You think government is there to make sure the new business is safe and all that, but I was able in my old job at another network to open a business in Hong Kong in one day. And I think that's I think that's the reason Hong Kong is prosperous. But when I ask the people there, why do you think you're rich and communist China and much of the, the world and your part of the world is poor? They had no clue. Yeah. But 
that's often the case. When we take something for granted, when things work, we don't think of it. We don't read the instruction manual when all the technology works as it should be. There's an old saying, he who has satisfied his thirst, he turns his back to the well. And that's why we need Milton Friedman. That's why we need free to choose to remind us that we can't take this for granted. It's because of specific ideas and a conscious, determined effort to make people more free. Now, there's this woman in Canada who wrote a New York Times bestseller trashing Milton Friedman. And she says things like, these reforms are so wrong and unpopular, they can only be implemented through deception and crisis. Yeah. What's your answer? When we talk about democracies and dictatorships, it's important to realize that the places that have made the most progress in implementing Friedman's ideas have not just being democracies, they've become more democratic. Because as Friedman predicted, when people get more prosperous, when they become more independent, when we have new economic power centers that aren't necessarily connected to the government, it means that people will also begin to demand democratic freedoms. Well, Johan, stay with us because later we'll be joined, not by that author because she didn't want to come, but another Friedman critic. But first, did you know that Milton Friedman focuses on much more than just raw economics? He also helped end the military draft and start the school choice movement when we return. <laughs>